Now, uh, I was trying to think of the best way to describe this. I told somebody that I'd seen this movie, and I was trying to think of the best way to describe it without spoiling anything, because this goes down some some dark paths. Uh, <laughs> what, what are you saying to your to your friends and family, or people that are that are going to attend South by Southwest? Hmm. We've been rehearsing it for years now. I don't think we have really <laughs> come up with something that we feel great about. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess combining the analog synthesizer engineer who's kidnapped with a, a, a bloody help note that arrives to the post office, you know, trying to juggle both those elements. Um, <laughs> yeah, the dead letter investigator role that we sort of sensationalize, that's one that I always go to and just the concept of dead mail in general. And then I just try to stop it as quickly as possible and say you should see it yeah yeah that's a good way to do it well john and sterling you, you looked like you had a whole lot of fun making this one even though you know it is you know dark in places I, I bet the set was actually pretty pretty light right <laughs> sterling you first oh uh, see you did this last time. okay um <laughs> yeah i mean it, it was it was fun making it. anytime i get a chance to make make a film with 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 Kyle and Joe that it is fun it's it's fun we've we've done some some other things together and and it's always fun and they always bring in uh you know really quality people and obviously you know John's at the top of the list so yeah ev everything that you know it made it it made the process um you know bare bones though though it was it made the process um, really nice and and pleasant. Everybody that that worked together liked each other and enjoyed the process of making films. So yeah, it was nice. I, won't, I wouldn't push it that far that we all liked each other. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but one thing, you know, it it was slam bam. Thank you, ma'am. You know, shooting this. You know, you showed up and boy, you work. You know, a lot of times, you know, on on bigger budget you know, production, you spend most of your time waiting. You know, the, that old adage, hurry up and wait. Mm -hmm. But man, when we showed up to work, we worked and we 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 did a lot of pages and a lot of scenes in one day, and it was yeah. great. And like Sterling shared uh, before, you know, like with men of the theater so uh, we uh you know we're pretty good you know on our feet and uh you know delivering and uh you know and yeah so it, it was a great experience I, I i loved it yeah well men of the theater but also people have been seeing you both pop up in so many things for for years and you know i was curious to know what what were the things that people that, that uh maybe either on the set or otherwise will always say to you you know i i saw you in this and and they just keep coming up all the time we, we, you know, Sterling and I worked on a, a Star Trek uh, right. years ago. Which one was yeah. it? Was it Star Trek Enterprise, Sterling? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, no, um, um, Next Generation. Oh, was that, oh yeah. Next Generation? Yeah. God, was that but, old? But, but, but see, John, see, John, he's he's Mr. Star Trek. He's done every Trek that's ever been in existence. Yeah. You know? know. Um, so, so, and I was, me being kind of a, uh, a low key Trekkie, um, you know, I was like, you know, I was I was a little starstruck. I was a little, I was a little goo googly over that one. Well, one of my was, favorite. Was on nice. I'm sorry, you go, Joe. Go ahead. Or one of my favorite on set stories was these guys were filming a really intense scene. Sterling's tied up um, in my bathroom, and uh, they deliver this amazing scene. And they were both so good. As once the scene was done, they would just start talking and resuming their conversation. They're talking about something. And John mentioned like, like, oh, on the set of Star Trek. And Sterling was like, that's where I know you from. <laughs> I am ashamed as a Trekkie that I didn't put this together sooner. But now yes, I, was, I think you remember the episode. And <laughs> but it was a, a good moment after 10 days on set that they made that connection. Yeah. I was so grateful to play a human being finally uh, in in this film, and you know, make up and play alien. <laughs> oh, I love that, but you know, the look of this movie is really um, special too. It, it looks like something that you know we would the, the, the movie the film looks and feels like something that we would have seen in the video store shelves like years ago, which I know is you know what you're looking for. But I gotta know like how and like how much that work that had to have been to to go through that to to make sure every little detail was you know of a, of a certain time because we, we, there's so many things in the way of that right 
Uh, we were lucky that, you know, I think being in Los Angeles and having exposure to a lot of good um, antique prop shops, we were able to source with our production designer, Peyton Jane, a lot of a lot of good stuff. But I mean, a lot of it was almost just kind of keeping things simple and making sure you had the sets were as authentic as we could afford to make them. And otherwise, just relying on these, you know, and the costumes were great, Carrie Ann, our costume designer was amazing. But um, just, you know, creating a world that hopefully was somewhat authentic and keeping the camera simple and letting it capture this world. And one of the early things Kyle proposed that was really just brilliant and carried it visually was these uh, wide lens B speeds, um, same ones they used on Taxi Driver. I just remember the first day looking at some of the dailies and mm. I pulled up Taxi Driver. And I'm like, man, we're we in this realm. Like this is this is just right. Yeah, I love it. And, you know, I know people will ask you at South by Southwest, but, uh, you know, of course, you, you each have really interesting backgrounds and and, are, and you're doing it and doing it all the time, making good art. And so what kind of advice would each of you give to someone that wants to follow in your footsteps? Yeah, I mean, I would I would just say keep hustling, honestly, just don't stop working um, and obviously make sure you're you're doing things that you think feel original to yourself that you're not doing because you think they're going to resonate or whatever. Um, but if, if you think it's, it's true to what you want to say or do keep doing it. Mm -hmm. I think finding also, a, a, a core group of people you enjoy working with, like Joe and I have been friends since, since sixth grade, we met at recess, I think morning recess, October. <laughs> um, whoops, sorry guys. Um, but, um, but yeah, and, and then the Sterling, we've worked with him for many, many years now. And we, I think, you know, have such a, such a shorthand of we know what Sterling is. Sterling's a, amazing at so many things. And it's so amazing and such a privilege to write for him and always exciting to continue to work with them. And like John mentioned, you know, when low budget, long days, having to film a lot just to have that kind of camaraderie and, um, you know, past history, which, you know, we're excited to continue to work with John. Hopefully it's good to have that core group. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. And uh, John, what would you say? What, what would I say about what? Uh, what kind of a, <clears throat> advice would you give to actors that want to get into what you're doing? Get out of the business. Go into accounting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what would I say? Oh, you know, I think the boy Kyle and Joe said it. Just keep doing it, you know? Just mm -hmm. get up and do it again. And, you know... Uh, and hey, if you if you fall down, you, you know, hey, use that as a learning experience. What you know, how to grow from it all. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, hey, you know, I'm an old fuck here. You know, I'm I'm, I'm in my. I people say I shouldn't talk about how old I am, but I kind of take pride in it that you know I'm I'm a seventy. I'm going to turn seventy three in in May. Wow. You know? I'm awesome. still doing it. I know I look fabulous for 73. <laughs> but, uh, you, know, really uh, you know, I'm just so grateful to be working and still. And I feel actually now I'm actually a better actor than I was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you know, mm. keep, because of doing it. Keep Just keep doing it. So, okay, Sterling, your turn. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I suppose, you know, I would echo everything that the guys are saying, you know, being being true to yourself and and your desires, it's it's easy to let, you know, sort of the industry kind of set the mark for what you what you really want to do. And pretty soon you start, you know, chasing a mirage, actually, you know, or a unicorn, um, you know, as far as a, for, for career. But when you start looking at, and Kyle and I were just talking about this yesterday, I think, when you start looking at the things that, that, that you would be satisfied with, you know, prior to even jumping in this business, what would you say your, 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 your dream is? And then understanding you know, that achieving that requires, you know, from my perspective, craft, right? You you get, go study, 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 whatever, whether you're a director, writer, cinematographer, actor, study, know, know the history of those things and the traditions with which, you, you know, you, you come out of. Um, and I, I suppose the last thing I would say is, you know, and I say this every now and then, because, you know, I have some some other actors that I work with and kind of teach and everything. One of the things that I was talking about is everybody's going to get their chance to get in the room, right? Mm -hmm. If you stay at it long enough, everybody gets a chance. Everybody gets a shot to get in the room. But the only thing that's going to keep you in the room is, is your craft, 
you know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know, um, and so I, I put a lot of stock in, in that S study, work at your craft, whatever it is, you'll get your shot. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, speaking of which, uh, my co-host Drew Pearson's one of our great Dallas Cowboys, went in the Hall of Fame, caught the Hail Mary. We're so proud of him. Wait a second. Wait, wait, stop, stop. That's right. Stop yep. it. Wait. That's right. You said your co-host is right. Drew Pearson. That's right. Is is eighty eight? Number eighty eight. Yeah. He Mr. is Clark. eighty. Mr. He Hail is, Mary. Come on. Wow. Yeah. For tw That's twelve cool. years now. Isn't that great? <laughs> wow. Tell Drew I said what's up. I will for sure. Well, you know, on, on the show, we always ask people their Hail Mary moment, which is that moment in your life or career where you just kind of have to go for it. And it worked out for you. Uh, what do you suppose that was for each of you? Because I know you all got good stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, like a year and a half, a year and a half ago, Joe and I kind of had to come to Jesus moment. We had been wanting to make dead mail for a couple years and or a yeah. few years. And we're like, hey, we got to do this. We're lucky enough. We have a little bit of financing, you know, like if we don't do this now, w when are we going to do it? It's been too long. And so I think, yeah, just, you know, even though we didn't have enough money and there were a lot of obstacles, I think just making that decision, like, all right, we, we got to do this. Or I think it was, if Sterling can do it, we got to do it. And thank God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was honestly, it was November of 22 and we went into production january of 23 after we had tossed this thing around for about two and a half years and we just said this is it we'll find a way we'll shoot leg one we'll shoot we can shoot x amount of pages now and then we'll figure it out so got the ball rolling and i would say that was that was the moment for us um just after our first film kind of got released during covid and kind of you know maybe wasn't treated the best um it was it was let's get this done now and see what happens Mm -hmm. absolutely sterling do you have a hail mary moment you want yeah to i mean i suppose i would say and you're you're talking about are you talking about with with the just game, in general oh, just in your career. life career yeah yeah i would say um my decision to go for it as as an actor as opposed to um you know, I was really thinking about whether I want to go directly out of out of undergrad to mm -hmm. to New York or L.A. or whether I was going to try and do the conservatory route. But or was I going to go to law school? <laughs> mm -hmm. And and I suppose the decision to like to like go west and go kind of conservatory and just kind of pack my bags not sort of knowing anybody out there or anything but kind of auditioning for for programs and stuff like that and 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 just not play it kind of kind of safe that was mm -hmm. that was sort of my hail mary moment of of my career i think yeah, yeah you know absolutely you, you got me reflecting on um uh, sterling uh uh, when I was uh, 22, I had never really acted before. I had tried to take an acting class in college, but I was an accounting major. I, when I was saying go into accounting before, you know, that's what I was supposed to be, you know. And uh, I went to Europe and uh, um, uh, my, my draft number was 29. The Vietnam War was going. So I went to Europe by myself. I flew on a plane, never been on a plane before. Well, yeah, once before a small plane. But I flew by myself and I, I ended up being in Europe for four months by myself, just mm. hitchhiking and traveling around, living on five dollars a day which you could do back then uh anyways that was a hail mary moment and i came back and you know what i i, I did a community theater a chorus sweet charity you know oh and anyways i met a girl there and she said i'm going to california to go to the american academy of dramatic arts money you come audition it's their first year they're going to be in california i go i don't know how to act anyways they were desperate for people they took me and uh uh i that was a hail mary moment i drove cross country by myself in my little vw bug and i you know with no money just enough to pay tuition and uh and i just kept practicing studying 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 and uh, here i am today you know but i'm still pretty good with numbers i know how to balance checkbooks and everything so yeah <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I love that. Well, of course, you get to come here to the uh, deep in the heart of Texas, get to, in the land of beer, barbecue, and all kinds of good films and good times. What are you guys looking forward to doing the most besides uh, showing this? I honestly can't wait for people to see these two gentlemen's performance along with the other people who work so hard on this film. Like we've been so close to it and are maybe a little sick of it, but I genuinely so excited for, uh, you know, the, the, the public, you know, however big or small it is to, to see these people's amazing work. Mm -hmm. I would certainly echo that. And I would say, um, I haven't even thought about the fact that we're going to be in Austin. The last time I was there, I was with yeah. Kyle probably about, yeah. 12 years ago um and my best memory was just the street tacos so i'm open to everything <laughs> i love that and sterling and i will be hiring some hookers and having a real <laughs> you know I, i'm sure we'll be there planned this man <laughs> 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 oh, that's great. Well, last thing then, uh, what what uh, can we expect to see from uh, each of you uh, after this? Because I know you're probably already working on uh, a lot of other good things. Yeah, Sterling. Kyle and I have, uh, oh yeah, Sterling, you go first. You got the big one coming up. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, so th the next thing that, that I, that's, that's up for me is this, this project based on this book called Liz Here Now. Um, and it's uh, it's uh, a directing project, um, and I, I may I may be acting in it. I, I not not sure yet, but we're we're prepping for that even even right now. And that's we're we're looking at an early summer window for that. Yeah. Um, and you know, yeah, and that's gonna that's gonna involve you know some folks, some very familiar folks. Uh, yes. you know, because one of the things that we like to do is we like, you know, to work with kind of a creative tribe. That's, that's one of the great things about, you know, working with, with, with Kyle and Joe, you know, it's like we get to, when we have projects, you know, we get, we get to work with people we like. So that's the next, mm -hmm. the next thing coming up for me. Yeah. Great. Yeah. What about you, Kyle? What's up for you? Joe, you were about to to go into it. Take it, man. Well, we don't have a working log line yet, so I'll let you pick up for me. But we're uh, we're in development on a project that takes place in the Midwest at a remote animal sanctuary, and we've got a a little couple in hiding at the sanctuary who's uh, trying to hide their identity. But lo and behold, a string of animal murders may uh, expose them more than they want to be exposed. That's where we are. So it's tentatively called Gunger Creek, and. Uh, yeah. That's what we got so far. All right, John. Firmly titled, oh, you know, <laughs> I'm I'm a glutton for punishment. I'm still a, a performance artist, so I I have a new show. I I workshopped it for one night in New York in November, called mm. "There Are Fairies at the Bottom of Our Garden." Anyways, I'm going to be doing it <laughs> uh, uh, in August at Red Cat underneath <sighs> Disney Center. So that, that's what's con keeping me up at nights. But hey, the creative juices are still flowing. So uh, that's great. Well, we're definitely looking forward to seeing all of you in Austin and uh, congratulations on the film and can't wait for the rest of the world to see it and appreciate your time today and talk to you all very soon. Thank you. Howard. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks, Paul. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye bye. Oh, you're not Howard. You're Paul. Forgive me. Say, say, <laughs> say hello to 88 for me, please. <laughs>